people that detect Omicron, uh, states, counties, countries, uh, that doesn't necessarily mean that they were the first to have it, it's just that they were one of the first to detect it. So in Minnesota, we were one of the first states to detect the presence of the Omicron variant, and that's because we sequence a large number of our positive specimens. We have a very good sequencing system in place. For the most part, you're talking about the same thing. When we talk about identifying variants or tracking variants, sequencing variants, that usually refers to analyzing the virus's genetic code to see if it is a variant and which variant it is. First, you have to start with the positive sample. You have a patient sample that contains the virus, SARS-CoV-2. Then you take that positive sample, you subject it to something called extraction, where you extract out the virus's genetic code and purify it. Uh, along with all of the human DNA and RNA as well, then you subject it to PCR. And the PCR, in the case of the tests we're using at Mayo Clinic, um, are tests that amplify little pieces of the entire virus or near, nearly entire virus's genetic code, um, amplify it in multiple little pieces, millions and millions of copies. Then all of those little pieces that have been amplified need to be sequenced. So that's the sequencing component. And then uh, the genetic code, uh, letter by letter, is created. So for example, it may be A, T, C, G, uh, and variants of those four letters. And then that code is compared to a publicly available sequence library so that you can see if it matches up with one of the known variants or if it might be something completely new. So it really is multiple steps. You use the information you get from sequencing in a number of different ways, really to look at what variants are circulating in the community, if there are new variants, perhaps ones that don't even have names yet. Uh, that is one of the reasons you would want to sequence is to identify new variants, but usually it's to track the spread of known variants as they go through the community. Some tests can be run within a couple of days and analyze many, many specimens at once, hundreds of specimens. Other tests uh, only analyze a few specimens at a time, maybe less than 20, uh, but uh, are a little faster. It really depends on the different tests. Here at Mayo Clinic, we use two different tests for sequencing. One is done in our clinical laboratory, and that is the Genexis test, the Genexis instrument by Thermo Fisher. We use that for testing clinical patient specimens, and we use that mostly for hospital infection and control, and uh, also just general information about the variant the patient has. It doesn't impact treatment at this point. The other test that we use is done in the research laboratory by Dr. Wieben and his lab, and that has a much larger capacity. We could sequence 700 specimens at once, but that process takes much longer because we have multiple teams involved. It does not impact treatment, at least not yet. The patients are still treated the same. But we want to know what's circulating in the community to track how the virus is spreading. If I were to get COVID, I would then isolate myself. I'd stay away from other people until uh, a certain time had elapsed, so I knew I wasn't infectious. But I don't need to know the variant that I have. But if I was with a group of people and uh, we all all got infected, we think at a certain party or event, like what we're seeing in New York City with the anime conference, then it might be interesting and helpful to know the variant so we could track the spread from a public health standpoint to understand how that variant may have spread across through multiple people. We need to remember that this is a virus and it is prone to continue mutating and some mutations might be clinically important, others may not be at all. A new variant may arise and then it may go away and it might not ever have any significance. For example, uh, some of the earlier variants, beta, gamma, we don't see those anymore, but the Delta variant, on the other hand, did spread very quickly. Uh, so that's one thing to keep in mind. Whenever we have a new variant, it isn't always an immediate concern. We need to watch and follow its progress over time. And then the other thing is that What's most important in stopping this virus, preventing new mutations, is to get everyone vaccinated and to continue to use all of our preventative measures, wearing masks, social distancing, because the virus only mutates when it's inside of people. And so the fewer people that are infected, the lower chance that a mutation is going to arise and a new variant will appear. 
so everyone should get vaccinated and continue social distancing and wearing their masks, even though it's tough and we are all tired of the pandemic, we need to remain vigilant.